What's going on folks? Adam Manis here with another guided practice session. This is more of a revelation than a session. This is 10 seconds of music that might change your life. This is how to really hone in on some incredible language with one phrase. I mean, it's one phrase from Red Garland. Uh, this is based on uh, just this solo break and the first eight bars of his solo from what is this thing called love from his incredible trio record, A Garland of Red featuring Paul Chambers and Art Taylor. This is a 10 second enclosure lesson. Now, the lesson itself is gonna be longer than 10 seconds, but the lesson really comes from Red Garland and that does last 10 seconds. So again, it's from A Garland of Red. This is What Is This Thing Called Love? It's a tune we probably all know. It's an amazing tune, a uh, very versatile sketch for us to improvise over. And let's hear from the master himself. We're gonna hear the melody because I want, I want it to be set up right. First of all, just the entire album. If, you, if you've not checked out A Garland of Red, just do yourself a favor today. It's not that long of a record. Go listen to the whole thing. It's one of the most swinging trio records of its era. It's unbelievable. And Red is playing his tail off the entire time. It's incredible. So please go check it out. Some of the finest musicianship on all three instruments you'll ever hear. Let's check out the head and then just our little bit of language here. What a way to start your solo. You know, what a way to start your solo. Let's listen to that break again. Holy smokes. Good gravy. Here it is. It gets better from there, by the way, but that is one of the greatest starts to any solo that you could ever Ask for it's one of the greatest 10 seconds of language I've ever heard in my life. It's so crystal clear what's going on. It's so swinging every single turn, every single broken seventh chord, every single enclosure is so hip. It's such a beautiful way. Let's listen to it one more time. Sorry, I'm freaking out, but it's just, it's too good. It's too good. <laughs> First of all, that eighth note, listen to that eighth note. How swinging is that eighth note? But every, like I said, every little bit of language there, that's that, just that one phrase, right? Because that's one long phrase that Red uses to start off the solo is an entire genius music theory lesson that we're going to try to break down. Okay, a caveat for this lesson before we get going too much further, before we start practicing it, I just, if you're uh, the kind of person who does not like to analyze things like the, the improvised language of these great players. Or if you, get, if you get too hung up on it, you don't think it helps to learn the music this way, to like break down what's going on and what's doing what, then please go watch another video. Don't, don't even continue for another second because you will not like this. And I promise you, it might anger you because this might be the nerdiest thing I've ever done with this one phrase. So if it's not your thing, that's totally cool. And, and I, I totally get it. But uh, just, this is not for you. This was not made for you. Don't worry about it. Uh, so before we play, I do want to play it just a little bit. Uh, but let's just look at what's going on. And again, avert your eyes if you are, <laughs> if you are allergic to analysis of things. So there are three main elements that are happening in this, this uh, bit of language here, this, this phrase large actually it's like a few phrases that are connected to each other three uh, there's more than three there's probably about six but here's the three that i want to talk about there's the run through which really only happens once but it kind of gets hinted at in other places right there at the top of the solo that right there's the three note surround enclosures which is what we're going over on our uh, on our enclosure boot camp over on open studio pro this week we just covered it today 
<laughs> it's that enclosure. Happens several times in this solo. And then there's a bunch of broken seventh chords, right? Where you take a seventh chord, in this case a G minor seven, literally one, three, five, seven. Uh, and there's a bunch of pivoted broken seventh chords. So it would be like this, but you take the top three notes and you go down an octave. It's a, it's a convention that a lot of, uh, especially musicians of red era and, and modern musicians still use. You take a, a seventh chord, you play the, the first note where it would be if you were to go straight up, but you play these top three notes, displace them down. We worked on this last week, actually. It's called pivots. Barry Harris talks about it. Uh, crucial part of learning this language. Okay. So those are the three elements we're going to work on. I can't, again, if analysis isn't your thing, you're just going to get fuming here in a second. So here's, here's, here, here it is. There, there it is. Enjoy that. Look at this. Look at all the stuff going on here. Before we even play it, I just want to just look at all of these. I mean, damn, that is a lot of stuff happening. So first we start with a run through, you know, it's a common bit of language here. And the, it breaks on C, right? But Red's probably already thinking like a G7 over this break. Which would be a common thing to do, right? To on the on the solo break, you're not really thinking C, you're thinking the five chord, right? Because you want to turn it back around. So he's thinking probably G7. So it starts right there with that run through. You see it there in orange. The target would be F. And then he's going to run up here. You know, essentially this voicing would be like a G7 voicing. We started from the F and went up. F, A, B, E, right? Outlining kind of a G7 sound. Little chromatic thing. Then right away, a three note in surround enclosure. Right? That surround. Our target is G which is part of the next, <laughs> I mean, it goes right one from one element to the other, right? So it surrounds from, uh, it's like there's a half step above because some scale or whatever, however Red is thinking about this, right? Then it's a G minor seven, a broken G minor seven. By the way, note too that on the changes that Red is definitely implying G minor seven with the natural fifth, not the flat five, which is interesting because I mean, like the real book has. You know, G minor seven flat five, but this is definitely even with the the left hand voicing, if you were to get it, is definitely a G minor seven with the natural five. Interesting to note. Same thing with the D minor seven. Uh, some people play a half diminished, but Red's playing for sure a minor seven chord. So check it out, broken seventh chord, G B flat D F, right, right away. Then another broken seventh chord. This is one of those pivots. This is really a broken ninth chord. You might think of this as like C seven flat nine. Which there should be a chord change there, by the way. Right? Right into another three note surround. That purple note, that D flat there on the three note surround, that's part of both. That's part of the E diminished seven, right? That broken seventh chord. That's a pivot. E, G, B flat, and D flat, we talked about last week. Uh, and then that's right into a three note surround, right? It's the same three note surround as before. And you're gonna see it again and again. Then on the F minor, it's another broken seventh chord, really a broken ninth, like an A flat uh, major seven, broken seven, or an F minor nine, three, five, seven, nine. They're both related. And then through here, these aren't, you know, really like run through enclosures, but they have that feel, right? Of like, right, you stop, you skip a note going down, you go back up the scale. And then he does it in reverse. Little chromatic thing. Then another in the red there, three notes surround enclosure, right? With D as the target. Woof. And then another broken seventh chord. This is another diminished thing over G7, like a three, five, seven, flat nine of G7 flat nine. Or B diminished. And it's a pivot, right? So instead of B, D, F, A flat, all going up, B, D, F, A flat. And that A flat is purple because it's part of another three note surround which goes right into another three note surround i mean I 
phrase number one of the solo. I mean, you can't get better than that. That's amazing. It's incredible. Jeez Louise, it's so good. Okay. So before we play it, if you want to go a deeper dive uh, for any of this stuff, we do offer courses here at Open Studio. There's a link to save $30 on Bebop Enclosures for Beginners, which covers all of exactly what we just talked about from Red Solo and goes over a bunch of tunes like Scrapple from the Apple and Groovin' High. There's a link down there to save $30 on that uh, below. Also, if you're digging this video, it seems like people like enclosures. Hit the uh, like or the subscribe button doesn't hurt lets us know what to do more of if you like that kind of analysis if you don't like that kind of analysis again just go just go somewhere else because uh, this is this is ridiculous this one okay let's practice it you know what i mean let's get to it i just want to play it that's really all i want to do just want to play it nothing more let's start at 60 percent. this is bouncy so we're going to get the language, right? And we don't need the color coding or any of that. We This is the part where we just want to listen and listen and listen and listen and mimic and mimic and mimic and mimic whatever Red is doing, right? So just listen. I mean, there's a good chance your eighth note doesn't feel like Red Garland's eighth note. for And, and there's a good chance you probably want it to. I know I want mine to sound more like Red Garland's eighth note. Eighth note. So let's just focus on that. The notes are cool, but let's focus on how he feels because that's to me the most special part about this entire phrase check it out <laughs> Okay, I'm going to do it again. I'm not going to play, but I might. you might hear me start singing. This is something that Open Studio members know we are way into here. So I might start singing this. Apologies to any um, dogs or children that are in the room that have to hear this, but uh, uh, it's a good way to start. It's actually the best way to start learning this kind of language. So I, I might start singing, and I might not be looking at the notation either, but feel free to if you need it. <laughs> good again and we're just learning it we're just listening we're absorbing we're gonna play eventually but we're just learning it sing along if you like it's great to sing along because it really helps you to ingrain it we're using your own voice you have to actually use your voice though there's something very human about that here we go <laughs> It's coming along because I'm singing again. Even if you're just getting like the big accents, it's all good. I mean, again, listening for the feel, listening to how he's phrasing it, the notes will come and can come later. Close your eyes, you might just listen again and listen again and listen again. We're just gonna keep listening. Yeah, I got it. One more time listening, and then we're gonna sing and play at the same time, shall we? swinging okay i'm gonna play it again or i'm gonna play the track again and i'm gonna actually play the piano with it this time i'm gonna keep singing though keep using that that voice i encourage you to do the same thing unless you're a horn player or something and or a singer in which case just keep singing all right here we go So good. 
good. Again, 60%. Now my voice is going to start to sort of fade out. I'm still going to try to sing when I can, but I'm really going to start to cross over to more playing. Good. 70%. We're going to start taking it up again. Just paying attention to Red's feel more than anything. And for our pianist here, how great does that feel in the hand? It feels so natural. It's a great lesson in like, you don't have to struggle with crazy, weird fingerings or anything like that. Sometimes what feels more natural is the thing that sounds the best because you can make it swing. Messed that part up. Try it one more time. Come on, 70%, let's go 80%, you know? Here we go. It's gonna start getting harder, it just is. Might loop it here just to keep it going. We're just gonna roll it and roll it and roll it. Here we go. <laughs> Got it, y'all. I think we got it. 90%. Let's do it. Nice. Don't got it. For the piano players in here, I want you to think about, again, we, we talk about this a lot this week when we're working on our bebop. Just keep this wrist nice and relaxed, nice and loose. You want it to be sturdy but and supportive, but you don't want it to be stiff, right? And, and tense up right around here on your arm. Keep this wrist nice and loose. You might think about making some circles here with your wrists, some counterclockwise circles, especially as you roll up towards the top of phrase. Keep the elbow quiet, right? You don't need to be a chicken wing here. The elbow nice and quiet, but use use that, that arm weight, just distribute that weight across the hand. Let's try it again. It's kind of the perfect thing to practice piano technique on because there's so much. There's, you know, a big chord and then a little enclosure. So there's like, bomp, 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 bomp. Let's try it again. One more time at 90. More time tonight. Can't go out like that. That's, it couldn't be more. 
more gorgeous. All right, 100%, full speed. You ready? I'm not, here we go. Okay, now that we're kind of fast, this is really the time to think about keeping everything nice and relaxed. Keep your shoulders back, keep your back nice and straight. Make sure your loose is nice and flexible here as we get to it. If you tighten up, it's gonna get really difficult. Again, just feel the weight of your arm and feel uh, distributing that weight around your hand here. Nice elastic hand, elastic wrists. 100%, here we go. Ah. bounce in Red Garland's eighth note. There's such a bounce there. Let's see if we can mimic that. One more time, one more time, you got it. You know what I mean, folks? Isn't that beautiful? So beautiful. Thank you, Red Garland. Thank you so much for the swing, for the feel, for the incredible language, for the enclosures and the broken sevenths and all of that, how you weave in and out of the melody and the changes is so effortless. Boy, that's really great. So uh, again, if this is something you'd like to see, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe because we go live all the time. And uh, just today only we're offering $30 off our Bebop Enclosures for Beginners, which covers all of these things uh, that you saw here. The enclosures, the broken sevenths, how to mix them like red. I mean, just that eight bars though is uh, everything. So uh, please go listen to A Garland of Red as much as possible. It's an incredible album and so much fun it's such a fun trio record so and uh shout out to uh the great paul chambers and art taylor for just keeping it keeping it so loose and swinging throughout the whole thing all right everybody great to see you here live on youtube i love these tuesdays getting back to us it. it's good to see everybody in person cool 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 thanks folks till next time happy practicing